I knew exactly what I wanted. I just didn't know how to get there. Mentorship is gaining the confidence of the person whom you're going to mentor. HB has really opened up avenues for me to flourish as a scholar. The HB year was the turning point of my research as a scholar. I seek ways for engagement with other humanists. Break boundaries and forge ahead in humanity scholarship. Most women academics are in the lower quarter. That is to say, most of us are lecturers, and many of us don't even ever manage to get to the professorship level. I, Professor Nana Abba Apia Anfo, do in the name of the Almighty God swear that I will at all times well and truly serve the University of Ghana Lega. Her appointment means a lot to us. In the late 80s, there were only two women. Right now, there are, I think, five women in the department, but it's still a good number compared with even 20 years ago. She has played several roles, one of which is currently extremely important, which is that the African Humanities Programme is moving to be a completely African programme, and she is one of the pioneers that's putting that together. It was in 2008 that I heard about the African Humanities program. At that time, there were very limited uh, opportunities, funding opportunities for uh, disciplines like mine and the work that uh, some of us did. There was no question, you know, that the humanities being left behind in terms of support was a travesty, really. So we were very pleased that the African Humanities program had been set up. When the CLS was going to start this program. I was a dean, so I remember Anje and his colleague came here, had meetings with us, and asked if there was money to support humanity scholarship, what would we recommend? The AHP offered several opportunities. For me, the first and the most important was allowing me time of teaching. At the time I was teaching on the Legon campus, I also had to teach at the Accra City campus. And then you have to combine all of these with your research work. Its goals are very simple, really. They are to make it possible for African scholars to take time off, to do their work, to finish their research. That allowed you to interact with other researchers and scholars whom you ordinarily sitting at your home university at the time would not have had access to. To network, provide the support and lift each other up. There's been a focus on supporting early career scholarship, on supporting the publication of books and articles, and providing mentorship. As part of the processes um, that the African Humanities Program uses, one of them is to enable people to go to certain centers of learning where there are senior scholars in their field that will mentor them. I've been working together with our Center for Gender Studies and Advocacy, and we've already organized the first in the series of mentorship programs for female academics here at the University of Ghana. <laughs> She's a leader, always likes to see change, and not just seeing it, but getting involved to bring the change. 
there are still relatively fewer females in academia. And even more importantly, as you go higher up the ranks, you get fewer females. And so I do have a personal commitment to ensure that there is support provided. It's not that we are not capable, but we need the right environment. We need the right support. We need to understand the peculiar challenges that females face in their rise and address these. She's bringing change and creating levels of confidence on the campus. Now, the two key things that are driving my administration is technology and humanism. Last April, I launched a seven million dollar digitalization drive to improve the University of Ghana students' experience. That program has three components, the classroom modernization project, the one student, one laptop project, and then the hotspot comfort zones project. The good news is that the idea is catching on and so at the Kolebu campus, the classrooms that we went to commission and others that we went to inspect where work is ongoing has been sponsored by various alumni groups. For the AHP, I have had the opportunity of being a fellow, uh, growing through to become a mentor, an assessor as well, and uh, being part of the formation of the African Humanities Association, which as you know is the offshoot of an offshoot of the AHP, and now leading the association as the inaugural president. What is delightful is African scholars getting to know other African scholars and also getting to find out how much has actually been done by African scholars uh, because we tend to quote you know people from outside the continent and sometimes and, and we just don't even know so the opportunity to find out and join in discourses that are African based I think that th that's another one of the great outcomes of the AHP. As a professional woman who also has a home to manage, for you to be successful at that, it is important that you have a supporting spouse. And I have been fortunate to have a very, very supportive spouse. One who understands the demands of your job, one who does not feel threatened and feel that he's in competition with you. And so I, I, I do appreciate the support that my husband of, uh, what, 26 years and counting has been, <laughs> the roles that he has played and the support that he has given to me all of these years.